Good morning everyone, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. It's approximately about 4 o'clock in the morning, Wednesday, and hopefully I can get this out Wednesday morning for your viewing pleasure. So I had a comment in the last video about a person who was saying that they had made a super duper SSTO, and that they had made a video of this super duper SSTO. Now the video can be seen in the description below, I'll go ahead and link it for you, give him some love. But it made me wonder when I was done watching the video, just how super duper could I make my super duper SSTO? Now you gotta remember I've been playing this game for oh gosh since it came out like like literally since it came out I, I I'd have to look up the version of the first one that ever came out on well it wasn't it wasn't even on Steam yet when I got it it was, it was still on the Kerbal, Web, Kerbal Space Program website at the time all they had was the uh, rocket um, the uh, the VAB or VAB they even had a lake with trees. I remember that. I think we had a total of 10 parts to play with or something like that. It was fun. Some of the rockets were wobbly as fuck, but that's okay. It was fun. I only started recording and making videos a few versions later when I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm making some pretty cool stuff. Maybe I should share it. And that's how the channel was born, but that's a long story. Speaking of channel, I finally caved into everybody's demands. You can now become a member of this channel for only 99 cents a month. You can have a uh, little emoji thing and badges and stuff. Also, apparently, I can make members only community posts. So while everybody's in the dark, only you will know what's being posted. I lived in the dark, molded by it. Yeah. You're trying too hard. <laughs> Lame! <laughs> so there's that. So if in the goodness of your heart, you would like some emojis, I tried to make it the lowest price I could possibly make it. The lowest price that they allowed me to select, which was 99 cents. Remember, YouTube always takes, what, 30% of it or something like that? So I'm only going to get, like, I don't know, a little more than half a dollar, half a dollar. But I just wanted to share the emojis and stuff because I thought the membership stuff was pretty cool. Maybe later on I'll make a tier two where from the goodness of your heart, if you really want to help support the channel, I'll bump it up to tier two will be like five bucks. And then, you know, I'll add whatever the heck they have options to add to it. But remember, I got a full time job. So unfortunately, I'm not able to tend to the channel like like I want. So yeah, badges, emojis, fun. And of course, the emojis and the badges aren't permanent. We can always go back and tweak them or change them or make new ones. So there's that. Anyway, back to the SSTO. So the super duper duper SSTO is one that can usually have a big giant payload and be able to deliver it into space or orbit. But yet the craft that delivers the payload is relatively small. Small usually equals efficiency. So this little craft, weighs about 40 tons, give or take. Well, not give or take, but, you know, 40 tons point something. I think it's, nah, nah. But its payload is 41 tons, which is one ton, one ton? One ton heavier than the actual craft. So I think that's more than 50% of the ratio between delivery system and payload, which is pretty good. It's something I was able to cook up in a day. It's not perfect, still has problems. But like I said, I don't have a whole lot of time to work on it, but I thought it would be fun to work on one. So here it is. Now, inter interestingly enough, I used to do this kind of thing with like three other YouTubers many, many years ago when we were building interplanetary SSTOs. I'm talking before Mark III parts were a thing, way back in the day, before Matt Lown or Mark Thrym, Marcus House, before they, before they even came to the stage. Like I said before, it was um, me, V4 Virus, and a few others just having fun. And the way we would do it for these ultra slim, skinny SSTOs that barely sipped any fuel is that we, of course, we, have, we of course would need a longer run. Runway. The runway that we had just didn't cut it. Now, in the video description below, you can go ahead and, like I said, go ahead and click on it, give him some love. He does what's what I remember doing similarly back in the day, backing all the way up to the hill and then flying off. But he does it a little differently. He he goes in kind of an angle. So when he when he's done covering that ground up to the runway, he then hops onto the runway using the side of the runway and then uses the rest of the runway to get up to speed. Ha <laughs> ha! Let me show you how I used to do things in my day. So back in my day, we actually put the craft on top of the hill. Now granted, I could do this the hard way and put a little bit more liquid fuel on it so it could propel itself up the hill and then turn around and park itself on top of the hill. But like I said before, I've got a full-time job. Uh, so wherever I can cut time, well guess what? Vessel mover to the rescue. So in the past, if we had something, a small little craft like this, we'd start from the top of the hill, roll down, and just as you get to the lip of the runway, way 
you use the runway as a type of ramp. Sort of like those aircraft carriers that got the little tiny little ramp at the end of the nose. You launch yourself and then you straighten yourself out once you get a little higher. Now, of course, this thing has, well, no wings to speak of. All it has is little winglets, so it's not really creating lift as it is force or however the game mechanics work. So I've got to get up to speed in order to get body lift. So once I hit that ramp, I got to point up a little bit, get some speed going, get some altitude, and then as I'm getting faster, I start pulling the nose further, further down as I accelerate. Once I hit about mm, almost 500 meters per second, then I just let the sucker climb by itself. And after this, it's just a routine orbital ascension profile. Get into orbit and you're done, right? Well, because of the fact that this is bare bones minimum SSTO, the payload isn't inside of a cargo bay. It's on the outside. So of course, it's going to create tremendous drag going up there, but we, you know, compensate for that. I was thinking about putting a fairing inside the actual payload itself. That would have added to the weight, but it probably would have killed the huge, humongous drag. Maybe I'll do that next time just to, you know, look at it, see what happens. You know, the little fairing idea that we fixed or, or the little fairing idea we came up with a few videos ago. Anyway, so you have very little, uh, very little delta V left when you get up there, but as soon as you let go of the payload and reconnect with your secondary craft piece, you've got over 200 meters per second delta V in space, which is really nice. Translated over to air breathing and it's over a thousand meters per second, which is plenty for course corrections. And landing this thing isn't too bad either. The center of mass and center of lift are right on top of each other, which does make it a little unstable. I could go back and tweak that a little bit just by bringing the winglets a little further back. But other than that, it flies fine as long as you, you know, don't make too much of a maneuver. It re-enters great because it's so small and it's got that, it's got that drag to it. It just slows down like a parachute. Now, no, I did not land at the KSC first time. Uh, this is actually like 10th attempt. <laughs> Kept on missing it. I got that blue ring graphical glitch too on the the nose cone when you when you uh, reload a save game because of uh, what's it called restock. Yeah. Finally, you know, here it is, 10 o'clock at night. I was like, man, I gotta get to bed. Uh, 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 this gotta be the last one. I'm just gonna make it freaking work. Cool thing though, I realized that I did have, like I said, over 200 meters per second rocket delta V. So I figured, well, well let me try to land this thing vertically, and it worked. I, I landed landed it vertically. Vertically. I mean, it's got wheels in the bottom of it, so I'm sure it could land horizontally as well. It is a little finicky, so I'm sure those those uh, landing gears, those cracking landing gears, if they don't bounce you off the runway and make you blow up, you can land nicely without them going cracking on you, then I guess you're fine. Because this thing is a flying brick on approach. It does not have really much glide tendency to it. So if you were to land vertically, you'd have to kind of nose down until you get to the, almost, almost to the ground before pulling up so you can keep that speed and then do it that way. Or you can slap a parachute on it. Either two. But anyway, there she is. 40 ton SSTO with 41 ton payload. Took approximately nine minutes to get, nine and a half minutes to get into orbit. I know that nuclear engines are looked upon as the bestest when it comes to small SSTO, large payload. But I just wanted to prove that you don't need nuclear engines to make it work. The nuclear engine and rapier engine combo is great for interplanetary SSTOs. Don't get me wrong. But like I said, my time is precious. So if I want to get into orbit, then let's freaking get into orbit and stop playing around in the, in the atmosphere. Nine minutes, 30 seconds to orbit is pretty good. Game time wise, nine minutes, 30 seconds. But when you're talking about 16, 18, 20 minutes to get into orbit, that's like, ugh. I mean, yeah, sure it works, but it's like, ugh. I ain't gonna ugh. fall asleep before you get into orbit. Are we there yet? No. So when I design stuff, I design it to get up into orbit as quickly as possible. And when it comes to interplanetary SSTOs, I try to do the same thing. Hell, I made an interplanetary SSTO using only rockets and nuclear engines. If you do some digging, you can find the video. It's uh, it's like a retro interplanetary SSTO. Kind of made it look like a 1950s retro rocket thing. It's pretty cool. But that's it for today. I want to go ahead and wrap this up so it comes out this morning for your viewing pleasure. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you really like this video, consider subscribing. I download often. Download what? No. Upload. Haha. <laughs> that, that was a joke. I got you. I upload often. Do dolphin. Whoa. Off shit. I upload all... You know what? You know what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. And if you want to join the membership thing, there's a little join membership button. Well, there should be anyway. I don't know yet. This thing came out like last night, and they gave me the green light, so I, it should be there. But I'll find out when I come back from work today. Anyways, this has been a Kerbal Space Program video. Love you all. Take care. And yes, waterfall. Yep, that's what you've been looking at. Finally got the damn thing to work. I know some of you don't want to see another SSTO video, so I'll be working on the Duna colony here pretty soon. But anyway. Anyway, love you all, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.
Bye for now. Bye-bye.